Hey, what's up guys and gals? It's the Tyrant here and welcome back to my Saturday weekly Q&A session for Halo or pretty much anything for that matter. It's my favorite part of the week. It's the time where I get to be candid with you. Don't have to worry about the footnotes, anything like that. I get a chance to interact with my favorite people in the world and that's you, my community members. I don't consider you subscribers or viewers. You are one with the community and it's so good to have you here. My favorite video to do every week by far. You guys asked a lot of great questions last week. So just so you know, I have narrowed it down to 12 questions a week. I'll be figuring out ways to expand upon that and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But if you have a question for me that you would like to be answered next week, just ask it in the comment section below. If for some reason I miss it, just copy and paste it into next week's comment section. And if somehow I still miss it and it doesn't get addressed in any way, shape or form, which sucks because you took the time to write it and I don't want you to be disappointed. Hit me up on Twitter, links to my account is in the description below. Before I continue, I do want to say I've got some great news for you. If you don't, if you haven't already seen it, on Monday I made a video called Top 5 Reasons Why Halo 5 Mythic is on an Indefinite Hiatus. And, and this basically pertains to my Mythic difficulty walkthrough, which is Legendary All Skulls On, for Halo 5 Guardians. I've done it for all the other games so far uh, since Halo 3. And I haven't really made any plans thus far for Halo 5. That video basically flushes it out. And the top reason was involved uh, my relationship seemingly diminished between me and 343 Industries. Uh, the good news that I have for you is less than a day after that video came out, uh, one of the uh, spokesmen for 343, one of their uh, employees, reached out to me directly, which I found so amazing, and it, it, it really, you know, got me excited. I'm not going to say who it was or what was in the conversation because I don't want to betray that trust, but I will say that it was a very positive conversation, and I'm hoping that I have some more concrete things that I can deliver to you and tell you about as time goes on. So I'm hoping for the best. But we'll see what it is. So I did something a little interesting for this week's Q&A. Yes, as usual, I pulled most of the questions from the comment section of last week's video, but there was one particular question that stood out, and it was from the aforementioned top five reasons why Halo 5 Mythic is on an indefinite hiatus video, because I've seen this type of thing mentioned in the comment section before. This was a question or it was done in a question format. It's one I wanted to bring up here because it's something I feel very strongly about. The first question is from JJab91, and he asks, why the clickbait title? It didn't have to be top five reasons. You could have just called it why Halo 5 Mythic has been put on an indefinite hiatus. I want to make this abundantly clear. Clickbait, the term clickbait is an insult to me because I put a lot of work and time and effort into these videos. And to me, that's the same thing as if you're an artist and you spend weeks, if not months on a painting, and then someone comes in and says, well, hell, what uh, Google image did you rip that from? You know, I know some artists that would end up on the six o'clock news if they heard that comment. And so I do take it as a personal insult. Usually uh, as a YouTuber, as a content creator, I'm trained to mostly ignore insults, not address them because that just feeds the trolls. But this is one that I feel like really does need to be flushed out. So first of all, let's talk about the term clickbait and what it is. Clickbait is a short way of saying yellow journalism. That's what clickbait is. Clickbait is meant to suck you into content that has no substance to it. When you think of clickbait, odds are you've seen it on Facebook, you've seen it on Yahoo, whatever. You know, most sites at this point have sort of a section where they have articles that you can read. And a good example of a clickbait article is probably one you've seen circling around, which is these celebrities now work normal jobs. And it even has a picture of uh, Kirsten Stewart with no makeup and looks like she's been out of the business for a while. And then you actually click on the article. As it turns out, most of these celebrities don't have normal jobs. They're doing some very uh, great work. They're working for foundations, for charities. They basically retired from acting, but they're pushing their celebrity status to do good things in the world. You might have one instance in there where an old 80s child star ended up becoming a veterinarian. But generally speaking, there's nothing of any substance in there that even came close to what the title said. And hell, you'll get through it, and there won't even be a mention of Kirsten Dunst. Oh, what a shame, too. I love Kirsten Dunst. So 
that is sort of an example of, of clickbait. Another example of would-be clickbait is, uh, you know, in terms of, well, actually, let me, let me take a step back for a moment and tell you exactly how this sort of thing comes up. So as whether you're a journalist or a writer or a content creator, one thing that is important that you do is create a title that's appealing. And this doesn't just apply to YouTube videos, this applies to anything. And so that's, that's part of it right there is you want something that's a little bit catchy, something that you know, is gonna wanna make people watch it, something that'll help you deliver your message. If you have a very bland, uh, word-filled title, less people are gonna be inclined to watch it. And I found this out the hard way a couple of years ago when I did my Halo Time Travel and Evolution video. That's the title of the video. And essentially what the video was about was how I ranked all the Halo games. And so I titled it Time Travel and Evolution because I was basically going back in time and talking about all the different Halos from past to present and how they evolved to from the one that I hated the most to the one that I loved the most. And in reality, the better title would have been top, or All Halo Games Ranked. And I wish I had done that. And even though it wouldn't have covered all Halo games because I would have left out you know, Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2 um, and Spartan Assault and Spartan Strike, still, it would have been a better title and people would have appreciated it more. I know this because I do a lot of other top 10, top 25, you know, that type of thing videos. So to show you how content creators sort of utilize this, and again, sometimes it does sort of come close to the line, but to show you how content creators sort of utilize this, uh, my colleague Naked Eli, his final video was called, and I mean final because it was the last one that he ever posted on the site, was called Microsoft Killed Naked Eli. Now, by top five clickbait standards, that video should have been titled, I stopped making YouTube videos because Windows nomenclature banned my name tag, dot, 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 and other stuff too. That's what it would have been called. Would not have been as interesting to look at. Would not have been as eye-catching. Sure, his, his uh, general fan base probably would have still watched it, or at least some of them but it wouldn't have drawn as much attention and it was a message that he wanted to be amplified. It's one he wanted to be delivered. And so it's important to be able to title it correctly so that more people are willing to see it. Uh, my buddy Late Night Gaming, he does similar things to his Q&A sessions to make them more appealing and so more people can watch it and engage in their own discussions and debates and all that good stuff and just it, it makes for really good discussion in general. And titling is important, and there's there's a way to make sure you don't do clickbait too. You know, look at uh, the Da Vinci Code. Clickbait for that would have been if the Da Vinci Code was about a guy having sex with a pie. That would have been clickbait. No substance. For my videos, yes, I do the best I can to have a title that will be appealing to you and to spark your interest, but I make sure that I back that title up with evidence and facts and you know things to composite my theory or why I have that particular stance. And so I try to simplify the title just to make it again more appealing for you, the person watching it. I have no intent on ever tricking you or anything like that. And I know that somebody's gonna be watching this and saying, you know what, if it wasn't clickbait, you wouldn't have to talk about it. That's like saying that Talking about racism makes you a racist. No, that's you trying to address an issue. And I know those two aren't on the same caliber even remotely, but again, it's something that I feel like needs to be brought up because as a content creator, that I do find is a personal insult. As people who watch this video, some of you may aspire to be content creators yourself, and it's and you're gonna be dealing with this kind of thing, but you know, it's something that you don't want to add to or contribute to. And I will say this, the vast majority of you watching this video right now are perfectly wonderful human beings. You add to my community. You don't take anything away from it. That's why I love doing these videos because I have you here. But also make sure, you know, when you come across these things, it's, it's, it's interesting to have to deal with them. And you have to, be careful of how you deal with them. And for those of you who aren't sure if your, your comment is going to be taken uh, as, a as a derogatory thing, 
let me give you some tips real quick. First of all, when you write a comment, I will say flat out that I promote constructive criticism because having constructive critical comments allows me to look at my content and make it better and make it more appealing to you, the viewer. A good one that happened a few years ago was someone told me that I cursed too much in my videos and I still do occasionally, but I've made an active effort to not do that anymore because of this one comment. And basically what he said is, hey Tyron, I'm a big fan of yours. I do want to say I think you curse a little too much in your videos. You make too many sexual innuendos. And, you know, I'm uh, such a fan that I watch a lot of my content with my children, watch a lot of your content with my children. And that's not stuff that I really want them to hear. Is that something that maybe you can cut out in future videos? And I took that to heart because he, he's someone who appreciates the content enough to want uh, to encourage other people to watch it and he's saying hey look this could be a bad influence but it was done in a very constructive way when you write a comment ask yourself this question are you being a dick or are you being constructive now generally speaking on a good day if I see an offensive comment especially if I see that word clickbait um, I'll just delete it and that's that'll be the end of it if I see something that is horribly offensive or if it's someone who has decided to consistently try to harass me or another user on my page, another community member, um, I will ban them from making any comments in the future. And so ask yourself, you know, do I want to make this comment so badly that even when I see a video down the road that I really like and want to actively contribute to, I can't? Or do I want to step back and think about it a little bit more? So that goes into the whole clickbait thing. Sorry for the rant. But I did sort of want to clarify that for you. I think the closest thing I've ever come to a quote-unquote clickbait title, and it still wasn't technically, but it was my April Fool's uh, video where I said uh, Halo 6 canceled and had the uh, explanation mark and the, the question mark and everything else and immediately said, uh, no, well, it, it hasn't been really, but to sort of clarify where that rumor came from and then I talked about it in the video, so at least it had some subs substance to it. A real clickbait thing would be if I had a video that says, Halo 6 teaser trailer, watch here. And then the opening sequence of the video was, which you could do if I had it on this video. That would be clickbait. And I don't do that to you because I want you to enjoy my videos and just sort of reinforce that I know that it's content that you enjoy you know, I look at the likes versus dislikes. And so when I looked at the video that this gentleman decided to make that comment on, you know, it's got about 2,000 views at this point, And there are 114 likes and there are only three dislikes. And that tells me that m the vast majority of people, almost all of them, who watched that video are glad they did. Either they were entertained by it or they, they, get they got new information that they hadn't had before and they learned something from it. So... I like the content I create. Hopefully this pr provides a little insight to you. And if you become a content creator yourself, something that maybe you can learn from. But remember, I never want to rip you off. My goal is to bring you content that you can enjoy and be entertained by it and be informed by it. So it's an interesting question, but thank you for bringing it up so I can use this as a chance to flush it out. Mr. JJab91. Our next question, again, isn't really meant for a Q&A, but it was still mentioned in last week's comments, and it's from Jeremy Spaulding. And Jeremy asked, can you stop repeating yourself at the beginning of the vids? It's annoying to watch and waiting four minutes to hear anything I haven't heard before or find a faster way to say what you got to say. Okay, so here's how I sort of break this down. First of all, my intros to these Q&As are long, and I'll get to that in a second. But in terms of the stuff that I repeat, yes, I do say it at the beginning of every video, you know, hey, if you have any questions or you want to submit questions, this is how you do it. And the reason I do that is because that pertains directly to this series and how you, the user, can actively contribute to it. You, the watcher, you, the community member, can make your own contribution to these videos. And so since it is important, and I don't always expect people to watch these videos from start to finish because they can get kind of long and preachy like I am right now. I want to make sure that that's at the beginning of the video because it is important. 
I have outros too, which are pertain to the entire site, not just Q and A's. And you've heard them every single video or most videos where I say, you know, click subscribe for more content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but that's separate than this. And the reason why I include that in every video is because I have to make the assumption that the person watching this right now, this may be their first time watching a Q&A. They may not know the procedure to do it. And I want to make sure that everyone knows it. I'm sure a lot of the folks out there watching right now have, you know, have the idea down. They know what to do, but not everyone does. I get new subscribers every day. That's why I make sure that when I do that outro or when I do a specific intro to a series like this, you know what to do. You know what to expect. You know how to get more out of your subscription here. So that's why it's important to me. But he does bring up an interesting point. Now, I sometimes do an intro, and this, this time I talked a little bit about uh, my interaction with 343 Industries. Sometimes I talk about things that have happened with me over the week. And I do that because these videos are meant to be very candid conversations, very off the cuff. I don't have footnotes prepared or anything. This is my chance to be able to have a conversation with you. And so this is where I start speaking my mind. I get things off my chest because this is the only opportunity of the week that I really have to do that. My Project Monday videos pertain to mostly Halo and Halo related content. It's not really a place for me to talk about my own personal uh, life uh, unless it has something directly to do with Halo. Wednesdays are reviews. You know, so again, that's about my pers perspective of a certain game or type of media. Again, really not a place for personal talk. And of course, Fridays I do walkthroughs for video games. So again, that's supposed to be pertaining directly to that video game, more specifically that mission. So Saturdays are my candid conversations with you, and that's how I got started doing all this off-the-cuff stuff. Now, to be fair, he does bring up an interesting point. So right now I do another series of videos called Sunday Fun Days. They're the most random things I can come across. Usually they're cat videos or it's just something that's happened to me in, during the week that I found interesting that I thought you might find interesting too. I had one video out there of a guy trying to tow a car and it slipped off the, uh, the truck, the van did anyway, and it slammed into a cop car. This really happened right outside my apartment complex. Thought that was funny, so I put that up. Since it didn't have any other place for my videos, since I do a themed video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that Sunday Funnies was my chance to post those random videos for people who still liked them. But I did have a different idea, and I'll let you guys decide whether or not this is something you would like to see from me, and if it's something that you think you would enjoy. Instead of doing Sunday Fun Days, I mean, I could still do those, but dedicate Sundays to sort of a podcast type deal where I can talk about things other than video games and uh, just basically bring up lots of different stuff, whether it's personal stuff in my own life, things that I see in the world, so world events, it could be politics. I know some of you don't like it when I talk about my views on politics or politics in general, and I get that, which is why generally speaking, I try to leave them out of my videos during the week, unless it's like a little side joke or something like that, but I try not to go on rants of any type. Sunday, I mean, I know, again, some of you don't like it when I talk about that. A lot of people don't like hearing other people's views on the world. Remember, you're always right, um, but it would be a package deal. And one thing that I sort of had in mind was maybe doing it live. So maybe I do like a YouTube uh, broadcast or something like that so you could interact with me as I'm doing it and then it would be posted on the site later as you know an actual video that you can go back and watch if you wanted it to. Obviously, it would be long. Um, possibly a little preachy, I don't know, but it would give you a chance to interact with me directly. How I would do this, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not really that big of a fan of Twitch simply because I don't like the, the quality of content that goes on that site. And I'm not talking about the actual content that is put on the site. I'm talking about, you know, in terms of resolution, in terms of just microphone quality, that sort of thing. It doesn't seem that great on Twitch. I'd rather use my own microphone to use on, on YouTube broadcast, possibly. I don't have a camera at the moment that hooks directly up to my computer, but it's something that I would be happy to look into if it's something that you want to see. So if you would rather me get straight to the point with the Q&As and save all the other stuff for a Sunday uh, live broadcast, 
I can do that. You know, it can be real time with Tyrant instead of real time with Bill Maurer. But uh, that's that's one option. Or if you think it's perfectly fine to have in the Q and A's and you're cool with just having an extended Saturday video, that's fine too. But let me know in the comments below because that's sort of how I'm going to gauge this. If I see a lot of people saying, "Do the podcast, do the live broadcast," I'll do it. I'll invest the money to get the stuff that I need to do it. If I see more people saying, nah, just leave it in the Q&As, I'm not going to go the extra effort and spend the money. But that is an interesting point that was brought up, and thank you. Wow, we are only two questions in and already 20 minutes in the video. All right, so my next question comes from Stick Frame Animations. I always loved those when I was a kid. And Stick Frame Animations asks, hey, Tyrant, which Halo game has your favorite front cover box art and why? You know, at first I thought it was going to be Halo Combat Evolved just because there's a lot of action there, but to be honest with you, and I'm surprised I'm saying this, Halo 2. Even though it's my least favorite Halo game, it does have some pretty intriguing box art. You see Master Chief sitting there on that ledge. He's got those two submachine guns in his hands. And in the background, you've got a city that's just on fire. It's burning. And it's just it seems to really broadcast what you're sort of hoping the game's going to be about. So I would say, for at least as of the present time, Halo 2, best box art, hands down. Our next question comes from Floodmaker Productions, and Mr. Flood asks, have you ever made or considered making a Halo machinima or animation? Yes, um, surprisingly, uh, when I first saw Red vs. Blue and how they were doing it, I, of course I laughed, it's one of my favorite series that's out there, especially when you're talking about web series, and I thought of doing an actual military version of that, where it wasn't jokes or anything like that, it was literally two teams on either side of Sidewinder instead of Blood Gulch, where they were actively trying to find ways to take out the other team, but it was mostly going to be focused on one team with the other team being sort of like the villainous side. And when I talk about sides like that, I'm thinking more in terms of like uh, GDI and Nod from Command and Conquer, where they're, they're two sides with different perspectives, but you can clearly see that one has more evil intentions than the other. So that's sort of my idea. Never got around to it. Getting voice actors involved is just kind of hard. Um, it takes a lot of effort. And I just really wasn't sure how to get that many people together in a way that it would, I could create something constant like red versus blue. But it's a good question. So to answer it in short, thought about it, didn't want to put the time and effort into it, and wasn't quite sure how I could. But excellent question, Flood. Thank you. Our next question comes from Onyx A314. And he asks, what do you think the generation after Scorpio will contain? What can they add to the consoles anymore? You know, that's a really good question, and it's one that a lot of people have because we're sort of getting to a point now where things are becoming more photorealistic. We're kind of wondering how graphics can really be better. You know, computers are already being pushed to their limit until you start talking about quantum machines. I think that the next big push, even for Microsoft, even though they haven't really addressed it yet, is going to be for virtual reality. And you see a lot of games trying to do this. The latest Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 7, that one seems to really make a hard push for a first-person perspective experience, not a first-person shooter, but a first-person perspective where you feel like you're in that environment where you don't care what the character's name is, you are the character. And I think that's gonna be a big thing. Basically taking a movie and making it interactive. And I think seeing a merge of those two empires, film and games, is something that we're gonna see a lot more of down the road. We may see pushes for, again, just ultra-realistic, um, uh, what am I looking for here? People or characters. We've already seen how far they can push it in the latest Star Wars movie, Rogue One. Some of the actors that have been long dead, they did CGI uh, versions of. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know the actor had passed away, and I thought that was the real deal. I'd love to see that in video games at one point. And I think once we get to that, where you can't even tell the difference between reality and fantasy, and you can also experience it from a first-person perspective, I think that's going to be the apex of gaming technology right there. So that's an awesome question. Thank you. Our next question comes from Freaky Iota. And he asks, what would you like, or how would you like it if Halo 6 had a dark ending, like if humanity actually lost the war? That would be pretty sick. I mean, it's, it'd be depressing. I think that it would disappoint a lot of fans. 
it, I'm not going to lie, it sort of disappoint me too, because I think people just want an ending that sort of wraps things up and does so in a very satisfying fashion. I don't think that, that that's the type of thing that would necessarily work for Halo, but in, uh, in theory, in the past, I really have enjoyed films and games that take that sort of tone, something that you don't really expect, because you don't expect that kind of ending. You don't expect a dark ending. You expect everything to be happy and to be wrapped up in a nice little bow. And so it's a nice surprise when it goes that route. But there is a way that they could actually incorporate that, and it's, that's if they have a Halo game that has multiple endings. And as I've talked about in other videos, having a more open world Halo experience where you can sort of choose your path might be able to uh, allow a player to experience that dark ending. So it's an interesting question. I think most people wouldn't like it if that was the ending, but it would be something to explore down the road or as a possible alternate ending to the next Halo game. So interesting thing, thank you. Our next question sort of is like it. Uh, it's from Delta Wolf 1000. And Delta Wolf asked if 343 uh, did a darker, grittier Halo game, what would you like to see done? A certain combat theater plays an ODST, a Marine. I'll be honest with you, I don't want them to see, see a dark, do a darker Halo. <clears throat> we sort of already had that with ODST. You know, you're going through the streets, it's kind of depressing, you've got the music in the background, it's all dark and rainy. Uh, but the most depressing Halo game I've ever played so far, the grittiest, was Halo Reach. Because all the main characters are getting killed off, uh, the music ties in with it very well. But I also didn't enjoy it that much. The graphics even played a part in that where it was less cartoony and more realistic. And Halo Reach, I understand why a lot of people like it, but strictly from a plot perspective, strictly from a gameplay perspective, just the way it was done compared to other Halo games, I wasn't that big of a fan. It just doesn't seem to be something that I would enjoy in Halo. Maybe as a spin-off title possibly, but something in the main series, it just doesn't seem to fit. But it's an interesting take on it. Personally, I like Halo's borderline cartoon type dealie as opposed to something that's ultra gritty and ultra realistic. I like to save that stuff for Battlefield or Call of Duty. So, but interesting question. Thank you, Delta Wolf. Our next question comes from Darian Champagne. Darian, I think you're in line to be the next James Bond villain. And Darian asks, would you like to see a Halo that took place during the Forerunner and Human War? No, I wouldn't. I don't know, even know how that would work exactly because one of the things that makes Halo, well, Halo is that you're not shooting other people. You're not shooting human-like aliens unless you count the soldiers or the flood forms, um, or I should say the, the uh, Promethean soldiers. But to me, that's, that's too close to a standard first-person shooter. Remember, in the human Forerunner War, while there were other species around, the two dominant species in the universe were humans and Forerunner. And of course, I guess you could technically count precursors too, uh, until the forerunners wiped them out. But you know, it just—I think that would be a more boring game. There wouldn't be as much variety as the current title, or the, the series has in its uh, current pool of enemies. So you know, I can see maybe maybe a mobile game for that type of deal, but not a full-fledged Halo game. But still, a good question though. Our next question comes from Mark. Cicola, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, um, Cicola, Cicolella, and he asked, Heron, do you think the fight against Cortana, if she is indeed evil, because some people think it's a bit up in the air, might take two games to flesh out, lucky number seven? No, I don't. I think that if Microsoft wanted to stretch the current story arc to a fourth title, that they would lose a lot of uh, lose a lot of that Halo fan base because keep in mind that once Halo the next major Halo game comes out, which is scheduled for 2018, the story will have been going on for six years. That's a long time. You know, even movies tend to come out every two to three or every couple of years usually, sometimes longer. But generally speaking, I don't think that that's a great idea. If you look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for example, yeah, a direct sequel to The Avengers probably isn't coming out till next year, but at the same time, you have a lot of filler stuff. So there's always Marvel stuff coming out there, but that's a long time for a Halo game to, to be stretched on. That's, that's something that I think a lot of people would be against. And in terms of lucky number seven, I'm glad you brought that up. We've already really 
once that game comes out, that will be the seventh AAA Halo title. Because we have Halo 1, Halo 2, or I'm sorry, Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, Halo 3, not counting ODST here because it's an add-on to Halo 3. Then you have Halo Reach, which is a prequel. And then you have Halos 4 and 5. That's why I'm not sure that our next game is going to be called Halo 6, but maybe sort of an end title like Halo Reclamation. So you have basically five Halos and then two others that have sort of subtitles to them. That would make a little bit more sense. I'm not sure because I think if they put out Halo 6, people are going to be like, well, where's Halo 7? That was Bungie's lucky number. I know. But they shouldn't drag out a story. And I, I feel that way about a lot of different series, not just Halo. But yeah, I think they would be dragging it out too much if they did that. I'd rather, again, as I mentioned in the, earlier in the video, I'd like to see just a more open-ended game that could cover more ground. That way you wouldn't need another game. We don't need a straightforward campaign. We just need a bigger experience. But that's still a great question, Mark. Thank you. Our next question comes from Halo Fans Unite. Damn straight. And his question is, what do you prefer more, Halo Wars 1 or 2 and why? Honestly, even though I do like Halo Wars 2, I think they did a great job with it, I still like Halo 1 more. Better cutscenes, better story, and more intriguing characters. You know, in terms of the Atriox versus the Arbiter that was in uh, Halo Wars, <sighs> Atriox is more interesting to me because he's a leader, whereas Arbiter is more of a follower to the profit of regret. But, uh, so... I will say Halo Wars 2 has the better villain, but in terms of gameplay, Halo Wars just seemed to make more sense to me. You know, in the campaign, I didn't have constant superpowers raining down on my base. Everything felt more manageable, and there seemed to be a bigger variety of things that I could actually add into the game. So overall, I enjoyed Halo Wars more. I wish that it had been out for PC at the time. I wouldn't have been as critical of it. But it is now, so that's water under the bridge. But yeah, definitely Halo Wars. Good question. Our next question comes from Pat Canny. Always good to hear from you, Pat. And Pat asks, I know this is random, but have you ever played Halo Zero or Halo 2600? If you have, what are your thoughts? This is not the first time I've heard of Halo 2600. Um, whenever I post a video about Halo, it does come up in the list. I thought that was something completely different than something that was actually in Halo. But thank you for letting me know. Uh, I've never played Halo 2600, but now that you've mentioned it, I will take a look at it and see, and see what it's about. Halo Zero, though, yes, I have played Halo Zero. I thought it was a great game at the time. I uh, still think it is. But So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, Halo Zero is a non-Bungie game, a non-Microsoft game that's just a 2D side-scroller. And it came out between Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2. And it takes place on Reach. And it basically all the events that lead up to Master Chief leaving Reach and picking up at the, uh, with the Pillar of Autumn approaching uh, Installation 04. It is a fun game. It's nothing amazing, but it's got all the sound effects from Halo Combat Evolved. It's got all the weapons from Halo Combat Evolved and all the villains except for the Flood. So it's a fun little game to pass the time. It's 10 missions long. I actually have wanted to post a Halo Zero video on the site. I am currently, though, having trouble finding ways to record the gameplay. Whenever I try to load it up on my screen, Fraps will not record it. I may try to give this a go with my Windows 10 machine because that has in-game capture. So if that works out, great, I'll post it. Um, if not, well, I guess this is about all you'll hear with Halo Zero. But always good hearing from you, Pat. Thank you. Our final question of the day comes from, oh boy, uh, Viva Wish Homosexual. Kind of curious, what is a Viva Wish? And he, that, that's the name, I'm just saying. And he asks, uh, do you think with the created one now being a significant threat to the galaxy that we will see a ma majority of Spartans regroup? I'd like to see a full red team and blue team with as many remaining Spartans coming together to stop the threat. Holy crap, that would be awesome. I think that the possibility of seeing that is very possible, especially with Halo Wars 2 that just came out. We can clearly see that Halo Wars 2 is going to have some sort of impact on the next major Halo title. The ending gives it away. And I've discussed this in other videos before too. So I have, uh, I have a strong uh, sense that we will be seeing Red Team in some way, shape, or form 
in Halo 6 or whatever the next major Halo title is. Trust me when I say I would love to see that. I think it'd be cool to see these two titans emerge to fight this greater evil of the galaxy. I don't know how else they would do it, but I think that would be awesome. And I think there's a high probab probability of it. Um, we need to see some sort of conclusion to Halo Wars 2 because it sort of left us hanging. And that would be a great way to do it. Bring it into Halo 6. Have this combined effort. So I think there is a high chance of it. And I think that's a great question. Thank you, Vivoish. So that does conclude today's Q&A session. Thank you guys so much for posting. I hope this was a great video for you. Hope you left here with some cool new information. Um, if you have any questions for me next week, again, just let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends. But don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more video game related content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on MythicTyrant.com. Don't forget about Q&A Saturdays because that's where we are now. And definitely keep a lookout for tomorrow's Sunday Funday video. I've been working on this for a while. I, I should be wrapping it up tonight while you're watching this video. I hope it comes to pass because it's something that I think especially old school gamers are going to really enjoy. And I hope you do too. So stay tuned for that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you right, I'll see you right back here next time, guys and gals. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.